Welcome back everybody. Today we're doing a siesta salt and lime lager. We're already getting up into the 90s here in North Carolina and I wanted to put something together that had a light, crisp, refreshing flavor to it. It had a little bit of that citrus with some of the salt in the background, almost like a margarita in a, in a beer uh, type format, but <clears throat> not quite as uh, heavy, if you will. Uh, so the inspiration for this was Stone Brewery's Buena Vesa. The just I love that beer, so I wanted to try and replicate it myself. So the grain bill for this one's pretty simple and it's pretty light. Um, we'll start with the water profile and then we'll move into that. So the water profile I'm going for on this was a, an American lager type profile. <clears throat> I'm on RO water, so I don't usually have to add a whole lot. And usually I can get away with some Epsom salt maybe some gypsum just depending on the profile that i'm looking for but for this one it was i had to put some epsom salt into it and um, i wanted some lactic acid in it to bring the ph down because the grain bill is so light that uh, the ph brew father was telling me it was going to stay up around a 5.8 so i was shooting for down there between a 5 and a 5.2 well here i lately i've had a hard time sourcing lactic acid i haven't been able to get anything from any of the suppliers and i'm sure by the time this video comes out they'll have restocked on it and it would be easier but what i did to mitigate this was put some acidulated malt in there <clears throat> and we'll see that when i go through the grain bill but for the water profile so here's what we got started with uh four and a half gallons for the mash water i uh, pulled out i started with seven gallons pulled three of it out for sparge um, so the profile on it was 51 parts per million of calcium, six parts per million of magnesium, 63 parts per million of sodium, 61 parts per million of chlor uh, chlorides, 24 parts per million of sulfates and 40 parts per million of bicarbonate, which should give that, you know, give that malt a good chance to kind of shine through a little bit. Um, the grain bill is eight and a half pounds of two row pilsner eight ounces of acidulated malt eight ounces of maris otter and eight ounces of flaked corn now i was hoping the maris otter would kind of give me a little bit of color with the the flaked corn giving it a little bit of the head retention on it and then for hops there's one ounce of liberty that we i put in at the 60 minute boil and then one ounce of motueka at flame out I chose the Motueka because it's supposed it has a good lime flavor to it, and I was hoping that that would accentuate the lime in this beer. For the lime, I ordered 18 grams of crystallized lime from Northern Brewer. Uh, I thought about I, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to use that or go with uh, lemon or lime zest, the lime peels, and I chose that just for the simplicity of it, and I kind of wanted to see how it how it worked out. Um, for the original gravity, we're I was looking for about a 1050. So it's it's not a super heavy beer, but it's up there a little ways. But I was looking for a 1050, and then the final gravity was looking for a 1009. And to get to that, I chose Omega's OYO 71, the Lutra Quike. Uh, and the hopes for that was a really clean ferment with high attenuation, but I was hoping for a really clear beer as well. I, I want that real, almost see-through, crystal clear lager type beer. Um, looking at a, an SRM of about a 3.4. So it's a fairly light colored beer. IBUs of 15, obviously, you know, with that low of a hop uh, addition, I wouldn't expect a whole lot as far as that. And, and it should finish off somewhere around 5.4% as long as everything hits the way it's supposed to but let's get into the brew day and see how this thing turns out can you feel it wrapped around your soul with no control you can't Oh, my look behind. 
So for this light lager recipe, we're shooting for a, obviously a lager type profile. So based on the RO water that we get from the county, uh, my Brewfather app says I need to put 1.8 grams of Epsom salt into my water. So I'll go ahead and measure that out and get it added. The strike water is heating up right now, so we'll get that in so it can get incorporated. We've also got seven gallons in our brew kettle, which is about two gallons more than what the kettle can handle for a mash in. Brewfather's telling me that I can do four and a half gallons of water for my mash. So we're going to, after we get our, our water salts in there, we'll pull a couple gallons out and I'm going to mash in at a hundred and we're going to shoot for 155 and the actual mash temp at 149. So I'm going for a little bit more of a fermentable type uh, mash profile on this one. So we'll get that measured out and get it added in. Part of this that we need to do is measure out our grains. I ordered uh, the, the crushed grains from Northern Brewer and they sent some stuff in one pound packages so we need to separate those out and weigh them down to the, the necessary weights for the measurement or for the uh, recipe. So we'll go ahead and do that now. In. We got 155 degrees. We're going to drop our grand bag in. I've already pulled out a couple of gallons of pork water, so uh, after our mash, I'll go ahead and reheat that and get ready to go back in. Shooting for 149, 150 degrees for our mash temp for this. We're looking for a little bit more high fermentable. Break up any dough balls we got going on in here. So we're waiting for our mash in. We're gonna go ahead and give something a try. We went by the local organic food store today and I found this hop lark sparkling water. It's a craft brewed with mosaic hops. I've never had uh, sparkling water before, not sparkling water, but a hop, uh, hop water. We'll give it a shot, man. It says it's a pine forward hop experience. Audacious flavors hide in actual plants. Yeah, it's clean, simple, and damn refreshing. We'll give it a shot and see how it... Oh, it is. Definitely, you can definitely smell the hops in it. And it, it has a, a really good, like that mosaic, piney, just, just a hint of citrusy in the background. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, a guy could be used to that.
add some of the oil. We're going to go ahead and drop our work chiller in so it sanitizes. But at the same time, we're going to add a roll flock tablet, about a teaspoon of yeast nutrient, and I picked up some um, crystallized lime added from Burger Brewer. We're going to put that in. I thought about using lime uh, brine or lime peel before it, so I set it up, throwing it in. But I wanted to try the crystallized lime to see if it kind of saved me a little bit of time with uh, the uh, process of lime. We're going to add that in the last 10 minutes and then the final pop addition is going to happen at uh, Flame Mouth. We're going to pull, pull for about 10 minutes with uh, an ounce of Latuka just to kind of accentuate that lime flavor a little bit. Let's go ahead and throw our work chiller in. We'll set up the, uh, we'll get the uh, water set up on that as it's boiling for the last 10 minutes. There's our full flock and yeast nutrient. And then there's 18 grams of the crystallized lime. Hopefully that gives it an added uh, lime taste that we want for the salt and lime water. If not, we'll go ahead and add some uh, lime peel at the end of this. Kind of accentuate it a little bit more. All right, there's the uh, the salt addition. Uh, it's half ounce ish of uh, just plain sea salt, no additives or anything. You don't want to use iodized salt because it's got the added iodine in it. It can actually throw the the flavor off of the beer. It, it may mess with the pH a little bit, but this shouldn't. Okay, and we got an ounce of Motuka again from Northern Brewer. And uh, we're going to just whirlpool this for 10 to 15 minutes just to get that extra lime flavor incorporated in with everything. I'm going to add it in with the, uh, the hop sock that I've already got in here. On that get the original gravity right where we should have it about 10 50 maybe just a little bit over so let's go ahead and sanitize Okay, brew day is done. We got our pitch, yeast pitched. We got an airlock on it. We're going to put it in the fermentation chamber and let her go. A couple of days, I should see uh, some pretty good fermentation activity. Fermentation chamber is set through my inkboard at 67 degrees, which should give that nice uh, pseudo lager finish on it. 
and uh, we'll keep it updated as it goes. Be on the on the back side of it. Okay, so we're brew day complete. Went uh, about seven days in the fermenter and then racked it into the keg. Let it sit on gas for about 30 hours, uh, sitting about 35 PSI. So one thing I did with this that I didn't mention before was I threw the, the floaty in there. I wanted to track where my fermentation was at as far as the temperature and then as the gravity dropped down. <clears throat> and one thing I did notice I didn't have it quite calibrated as good as what it should have been. The, uh, I'll show you, but the uh, original gravity said like 1070. And then the, the final gravity showed out as like 1020. So it was, it was way off uh, in comparison to what the actual beer was. But it still gave me the data as far as where the fermentation was and when it finished out. After the, the fermentation finished, I cold crashed it for two days at about 40 degrees. Uh, it took every bit of a day and a half for my little fermentation chamber to get it down to that. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. And it's just, it's almost got like a Gatorade lime color to it. It's not as clear as what I was hoping for. Um, some of this is chill haze, but there is a little bit of haze in it. And I think that probably came from the, the lime edition. Uh, I, I, if I do this again, then I probably will, because this is just, this beer is phenomenally delicious. Uh, I'll probably add it as a, a as I keg it. So I'll probably take that, that um, crystallized lime additive and boil it, you know, chill it, and then put it in the, in the keg as I rack into that. But it's just got this really just fluffy foamy white head on it that comes from that uh that flaked maize or the flaked corn and then i think the the maris otter probably helps a little bit with that too but mm. it, it's got kind of a there's that bready a little bit of a malty smell and you can smell the lime just real faint Kind of catch a hint of the lime on it. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. It's got a little bit of that bready maltiness that you would expect in a light lager. And then the, the lime on the backside. And then it's kind of almost like it's chased with salt. Oh, that's delicious. Oh yeah, that will be added to the, uh, we're going to brew this one again list. Yeah, but thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, I'm going to try and keep up with some of the content, keep stuff coming out for you guys. Uh, if you like what you see, comment on the videos, like, share, subscribe, hit the little bell, make sure you get the notifications when they come out and we'll see you again next time.